Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton on this January 6th, the day of the Epiphany. Epiphany. E the, the Epiphany of our Lord. Um, kind of a kind of a big day in the church. Um, the Feast of the Epiphany of our Lord commemorates no event, but presents an idea that assumes concrete form only through the facts of our Lord's life. The idea of Epiphany is that the Christ who was born at Bethlehem is recognized by the world as God. At Christmas, God appears as man, and at Epiphany, this man appears before the world as God. That Christ became man it needed no proof, but that this man, this helpless child, is God needed proof. The manifestations of the Trinity, the signs and wonders performed by this man, and all his miracles have the purpose of proving to men that Jesus is God. Lately, especially in the Western Church, the story of the Magi has been associated with the fe this feast day. As Gentiles who were brought to faith in Jesus Christ, the Magi represent all believers from the Gentile world. That's what's written here in my little book. But let me say this. Okay, the day of the Epiphany is always recognized as the, uh, as the coming of the Magi. Um, and, and Magi is, is a, uh, the word Magi um, isn't short for magician or something like that. It is uh, simply the, what do you call that when, when a word in one language is used directly in another language? Um, but that's what it is. The, the word in Greek is magi, and so in English it's magi. Um, doesn't mean magician. These are learned men. They're not kings, contrary to the popular hymn. Um, they, they, they aren't lords or anything like that. They are, they are the learned men from the East. Um, Chaldeans, they're called in another place because that's what the people of the East are. They're the same... They're the same types of people that Nebuchadnezzar called to him and Balthazar in, in the book of Daniel called to himself uh, to understand the signs that were occurring uh, before them or to interpret uh, the dreams. Um, they're, they're learned men. Um, I can go into a lot more on them, but I'll leave that to, to uh, well, uh, to the congregation I'll preach to on Sunday um, and to your pastor uh, to share that with you, you know. The silly little things like the, the there, there may or may not have been three. We know there was more than one because the word magi is plural. Um, but there's nothing in scripture that tells us that there were three. Um, the names are the names that we have for them uh, come to us through uh, historical tradition, not through scriptural understanding. Um, three is nice because there's three gifts. Um, that's why it works out that way. Three is nice because it's Trinitarian, um, but there probably were several uh, learned men who were coming. Um, so I'll leave, I'll leave your pastor, whatever he wants to do with that. The, the one dangerous thing, the, the one thing to be careful of, <clears throat> I was discussing this with Bonnie yesterday in the car when we were uh, going somewhere, and I said, I said the, the, the dangerous thing is we begin to talk about the, the Magi and, and the events surrounding the Magi and and things like that, and we forget that it's not about the Magi, it's about the Christ. Um, and that's what the season of Epiphany does. During the, the season of, of the Epiphany, the, the coming of these Magi, um, and then the Sundays that follow, the baptism and, and the water into wine and things like that, are the events uh, that took place and are recorded in reality, in, in, as, as historical events, um, that point to the divine nature, the manifestation of the divine nature of this man who is God, the God-man, Jesus the Christ, both son of man and son of God, fully God, fully man, and capable of doing everything that God is capable of doing because he is God, the son of the Father. Uh, and it's to him that we, we point to in the epiphany. Um, just one other thing, I guess, uh, the, the the thing I read here kind of said that, that, that uh, Christ born in Bethlehem is recognized by the world as God. Well, he's really not. Nobody knows he's there. Um, 
only the only Mary and Joseph and the shepherds are the only ones that really seem to know that Jesus is there. Um, and then the, these kings show up and, and they know, well, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds represent um, the, 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 the Jews, the, the, the fulfillment of the promise to Israel that God will visit his people. Um, as Zachariah said at, at, uh, at the uh, birth of John the Baptist. Um, uh, but the epiphany is kind of, uh, it, not kind of, but it, it's, it's the Gentile Christmas. Um, all the world now, outside of the Jews, but represented in these three in these three kings. See, there I go doing it. Represented in these wise men who are coming is the Gentile world, the ethne, the goi, uh, the not Jews. Uh, all the world now worships him. And so what, what, what the Jews received on Christmas Eve, the Gentiles receive on Epiphany. So today is, is that day that marks the, the, the day of the Epiphany. Um, and then the, the days that follow are the days after the Epiphany. Um, so we're not, we're not the Sundays in Epiphany but the Sundays after Epiphany, which lead all the way up to uh, Good Friday. Uh, not, not Good Friday, up to Ash Wednesday, when Lent begins. Um, Candle Mass, I think, if I'm, if I'm right, um, we call that. So today, today the day of the Epiphany, a day that, that needs to be and ought to be celebrated in our churches each and every year. Um, I'm... I, Today I'm moving. Today is is the Epiphany. Obviously, it's not Sunday. We're not having a special service, although we probably ought. Um, no, today we are going to move it to the to this Sunday, the eighth, and we'll celebrate the Epiphany on this Sunday. Observe it on this Sunday. Um, many churches will observe the baptism of Jesus on this Sunday. Um, I'm going to move the baptism to the to the fifteenth, and we'll observe the baptism of Jesus on the fifteenth, and then and then pick up. Um, pick up with the third Sunday after the Epiphany. That's just what I'm doing in in my congregation, you know. And uh, pastors have the option of doing these things however they feel best suits the congregation, right? And so that's that's what this poor man is doing. So Bonnie says religious freedom. Well, a little bit of audi offer there. Yeah, you're right. Freedom to do what, we, but the events that point us to Christ and to his divinity and to his salvific work, we need to uh, celebrate, participate, uh, and preach. So let's see who's here with us this morning. It looks like we got a kind of a small group here as we're getting started this morning. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. And there's uh, Kathy, good morning on this epiphany morning. Michael and Karen, good morning to you guys. Ah, oh, you're going to see the Saddlers. Well, greet, greet them from uh, Bonnie and I, if you would, please. Um, it, I, I see their posts periodically on Facebook, uh, but I haven't seen them join us in a while, which that, that's fine. That's not a, but just let them know that, that uh, I'm glad that you're going to see them and, and that uh, I wish them well. Uh, Verna, good morning to you. There's Connie and Robin, Connie commenting on, on my good morning. Uh, moving kind of slow, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Renee, good morning. Uh, skim of snow on the ground and gray and cloudy. Well, that sounds like Wisconsin. So, Jerry, good morning to you. There's Ann chiming in. Good morning, Ann. Glad you're here with us. Um, I jumped a little bit here, so somebody else. There's uh, Neil and Geraldine. Good morning. Uh, to you guys. There's Bonnie. Yeah, 17 foggy and gray. Yeah, it's, it's one of those 17s that doesn't feel like 17. It feels warmer than that. Um, well, all right, Bonnie doesn't think it feels warmer than that. I got a hot out of the other room. Um, but the, the dampness makes it feel, it's colder yet warmer, you know? Um, all right, let's face it, it's miserable. Um, uh, yeah, so that's... Uh, uh, 10 to 4. Are those your odds? Oh, that's when you're going to see them at 10 o'clock this morning. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and get on with um, everything that we have going here. I think that's everybody. That, I'll do a one more refresh and just, all right, I think that's everybody. So let's go ahead. 
The Lutheran Service Book, page 295, if you have it, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the morning order. That's the, the order I like to use here in these mornings. And I have my treasury right here as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 45, did I get this in? Yeah, Psalm 45, verse, verse 1. Uh, one through one through uh, one through seven verses one through seven Psalm forty five, my heart overflows with a pleasing theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. You are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, in your splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride out victoriously for the cause of truth and meekness and righteousness. Let your right hand teach you awesome deeds. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My heart overflows with a pleasing theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. I'm prepared to speak the things that you have spoken. Right? A scribe writes down what he hears. Right? So he's not making up the things that, uh, that he's saying. He's writing the things that he hears. That's the job of a scribe, uh, to take down what he's been told. And so I address my verses to the king. My tongue is now ready to speak those things which he has spoken to me. That's important. The, the, the words, how do, we, how do we begin this? The, uh, the, the uh, O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Uh, and, and then he goes on to talk of the, the might of the Lord. Uh, your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom, a scepter of uprightness. And that is the, that is the, that is the son of David. Uh, uh, that is the, the coming of the Christ. Yeah, let's go on here to Isaiah 66, 1 through 20. Now, um, on, the, on the Sunday, um, the Epiphany reading is, is Matthew uh, 2, verses 1 through 12, I think, which is the coming of the, um, the, coming of the, of the Magi, and the uh, Old Testament reading. Um, is uh, Isaiah 60, if I remember right, um, which we read here earlier, earlier this this week. Um, yeah, Isaiah 61 through 6, which uh, talk about talk about the uh, camels from Midian and Ephah and those from Sheba coming, bringing gold and frankincense. I had, I had the the service at uh, Pinecrest yesterday, as I told you, and so that was I used the the, the upcoming readings for this Sunday for that. Um, so that's sixty, but we're we're in Isaiah sixty six, which is the last chapter of the book of Isaiah, um, and uh, this is this is fairly lengthy. Tomorrow we're going to move on to Ezekiel, but today Isaiah, the last chapter of Isaiah, um, which is God's uh, final word in Isaiah on the 
the comfort that he sends uh, to his people Israel, to you and I, to you and I. Isaiah 66, verses 1 through 20. Again, all imagery. Um, oh, wait, nope. From verse 17 on, it becomes prose again uh, to end it. Um, but imagery again here in the first 16 verses. Thus says the Lord. Perk your ears up and listen. The Lord is speaking. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? And what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made. And so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. He who slaughters an ox is like one who kills a man. He who sacrifices a lamb, like one who breaks a dog's neck. He who presents a grain offering like one who offers pig's blood. He who makes a memorial offering of frankincense like one who blesses an idol. These have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. I also will choose harsh treatment for them and bring their fears upon them because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen. But they did what was evil in my eyes and chose that in which I did not delight. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your brothers who hate you and cast you out for my name's sake have said, Let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. But it is they who shall be put to shame. The sound of an uproar from the city, a sound from the temple. The sound of the Lord rendering recompense to his enemies. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came upon her, she delivered a son. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day? Shall a nation be brought forth in one moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I, who cause to bring forth, shut the womb, says your God? Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees, as one whom his mother comforts. So I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice, your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come in fire, and his chariots like the whirlwind, to render his anger in fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will the Lord enter into judgment, and by his sword with all flesh, and those slain by the Lord shall be many. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go into the gardens, following one in the midst, eating pig's flesh and the abomination and mice, shall come to an end together, declares the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, and the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them. And from them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, who draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the coastlands far away that have not heard my fame or seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations, and they shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses 
and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hmm. The reading today from, from the New Testament is the genealogy of Jesus. Um, in in, in uh, Luke's gospel, which uh, takes us from Jesus back up through his entire family to to uh, Adam, as opposed to uh, the genealogy in Matthew, which I believe takes it back to Abraham. But we're looking at Isaiah. And we're looking at all this imagery that was in verses 1 through 16. Um, there is no doubt. Um, the Lord says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Well, a footstool is a place over which you have all authority. If you remember, I've, told, I've spoken before about um, ancient kings and wars. And when the king was defeated, he was brought before uh, the victor. The victor sits on the throne and the, and the uh, defeated kneels down before the king. And the king places his feet on his back as if he were a footstool. Um, there is nothing in the world that is not under God's authority. Nothing. And he says that. He says, he says what's the place of my rest? What, what is my throne? Where, where am I to sit on my throne and place my feet upon the, the footstool that's my earth? Because the heavens were created by him and the earth was created by him and everything therein. All these things, he says, my hand is made, and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. How can you say we're going we're gonna to build a house to the Lord here in this world when all you're doing is taking the things that he made and making them things for him? Well, they're already his. That's the, 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 the tabernacle and the temple are made from things that God created and God gave uh, to, to the world, to man. Um, and But God commanded that those things be made uh, for him. Take the stuff that I've made and make a thing for me. When David wanted to build a house for the Lord, a place of rest for him, because David was resting in his palace, the, the Lord said, no, I will build a house for you. Um, and Solomon was given the task of, of building that first temple. Um, although David did all, um, the majority of the design work before he died, he gave it to his son and said, this is what we will build for the Lord. Um, but this is the one, the Lord says, this is the one to whom I will look. This is, this is what God desires of man. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. And suddenly we find ourselves back at the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that fear comes through the revelation of his word, understanding what he has just said, that he is the, he is, he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. We ought fear him. In a previous passage, it said, it's, it, it, we read that, that he, that, that God says, um, or that Isaiah says to God, um, sacrifices you have not desired. And, and here he tells us, he who slaughters an ox is like one who kills a man, who sacrifices a lamb like one who breaks a dog's neck, who presents a grain offering like one who offers pig's blood. The, the things, uh, even, even the frankincense, he who makes a memorial offering of frankincense, incense being used uh, in, in prayer, uh, let my prayers rise before you like incense. Um, like one who blesses an idol, because incense is used for an idol, idol worship. And so, uh, you know, how do you, how do you put all this together? Well, to the Lord, all things are his creation, and all things are his beings. You know, I, and he values man higher than any of the other creation, and yet one who 
slays an ox, sacrifices an ox, slaughters an ox is no different than killing a man to him. It's destroying his creation. Um, and yet he commanded the sacrifices, even as he commanded the temple to be built, he commanded the sacrifices to atone for man's sin. That, that in faith towards his promise, these sacrifices were made to atone for sin. Um, yes, but, the, but the ones who bring these sacrifices not in faith but out of obligation and duty they are no different than one who murders a man because the sacrifice isn't being done with fear and trembling um, knowing that that the person who who brings the sacrifice deserves what happens to the sacrifice as much or more than the animal who is sacrificed Think about that. The reason the animal dies on the altar is because the person who committed the sin is, should die uh, before God. But then he turns and he says, Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Those who have the fear of the Lord. Your brothers hate you. They cast you out for my name's sake. And, and, and that's the way it is today. It was Jesus who said, you will be hated for my name's sake. Your brothers who hate you and cast you out for my name's sake have said, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. But it is they who shall be put to shame. They say it, but they don't mean it. They say it because they think it's the right thing to say. They placate but the Lord brings his recompense, the recompense rendered onto his enemies. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came upon her, she delivered a son. Who's heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall a land be born in one day? Yes. In the, in the body of the God-man, Jesus Christ, the incarnation of God, a nation is born in one day. By faith in God, by faith in Christ, that is the nation we are. Uh, the nation of the new Israel. Uh, the nation of the, of, the, of the believer, of the faithful in Christ. As soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. The moment that, that Jesus was born, the beginning of things anew. And with his death, that new is brought to its completion, to its fulfillment. Rejoice with Jerusalem, be glad for her, for all you love her. Rejoice with her and joy, all you who mourn over her. That you may nurse and be satisfied. And now the Lord will feed and comfort his people with righteousness. Not through the things that we've done, not by the, the death of all the beasts, not by good works done by men uh, that they may point to them and brag, but by the death and resurrection of his only begotten son who was born of Mary. The whole, and, and, and on the last day, when Christ returns, coming in the whirlwind in clouds of fire with his chariots like the whirlwind, rendering his anger and fury, rebuking with flames of fire, purifying. The Lord enter, will enter into judgment, and all flesh will be done, and all things will be begin anew in the heaven and the earth. That's the promise we have. All, all, all month, really, as we've been reading through Isaiah, it's that promise that we keep coming back to. Um, that God knows who we are and he knows what we do and he knows what we think and he knows that we're sinful creatures but he also knows that he sent his son to, to save us from, well, from ourselves. And so when that day comes, when that day comes, all shall come to him and see the glory. Even, even as that day of the resurrection came, when he sent forth the disciples to every corner of the world to preach and teach his name. So also here I will set a sign among them. 
which is the raised cross in the time of Jesus, which is the coming of Christ on the last day. And from them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, to Ul, and Lud, to draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, on the coastlands far away, who have not heard my fame or seen my glory. That's what Christ brings, and that's what the apostles bring. And they will be coming on, they will be they will be coming from all the corners. I will gather them from the east and the west, and from all the corners of the world, from, from the very winds, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, and they will come just as the Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. So we will come. We will come to him, purified and clean by the blood of Christ and made new on the last day to worship our Lord in all eternity and to live under him and his kingdom to his glory. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us, who know you by faith, to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Friday morning, O oh Lord, faithful God, you gave your holy law not to ensnare or torment us, but to show us pure righteousness. Yet the sinful nature inherited from Adam seizes the opportunity in me to act on temptation and disobey. You promise in your word that you will not allow us to be tempted beyond our ability and that you graciously provide a way out. In his earthly ministry, your son, our dear Lord Jesus resisted the devil for over 40 days and nights of fasting and struggle. By triumphing in perfect righteousness and then humbly suffering and dying on the cross, he has won for me and all believers the forgiveness of our many and grievous sins. He grants me new life through the water of the word and holy baptism. And in his gospel, I will find the power of God, the power, yeah, the power of God to my salvation. As this new day dawns and begins, increase my love for your word. It is a light to my path and the way out of temptation's many snares. Through your means of grace, increase my strength and stand firm in the confession of Christ. For your holy word and sacraments alone can remove me from the darkness of the devil and the world and set me firm upon a rock that is his Christ. Put to death all the sinful passions that remain in my flesh so that I may desire only those things pleasing to you. This, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And uh, continuing to pray in the way for vocations, um, we pray for one who cares for a dependent family member. Heavenly Father, how I rejoice that you are gracious and compassionate, always caring for your people with great faithfulness and love. I depend on you as I now care for those who depend on me. Work in my heart and life to inspire all the attitudes and actions I need for this task. Patience, kindness, gentleness, wisdom, and stamina. Forgive me when those characteristics are not reflected in my life. Make me uncomplaining and long-suffering in meeting the needs of the dear one entrusted to my care. Prevent me from being irritable or annoyed at the requests made of me. Make me especially conscious of your will when difficult medical decisions need to be made. 
guard me from self-pity when I feel that I am giving so much of myself in these efforts. Give me the strength of body and spirit that I need for the daily routine that is ours. I am grateful for the people you have placed in my life who provide encouragement and support. Help me to see my own weakness and limitations and move me daily to seek your solace through your word and to avail myself to the privilege of prayer. Remind me of the great sacrifice of your son and his unhesitating willingness to come to the, into the fallen world and win our salvation. I need you, Lord. I cannot do this by myself. This task is too big for me. Empower me each day with the promise of your presence and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask also that you be with those who are suffering in body, mind, or soul, whether it be the effects of illness or injury or age. We ask, Lord, that you grant them comfort and assurance by your holy word, that you call them back to the grace that you've given them so that they can hear and know that all uh, is cared for by you, and that you are one of their creatures whom you care for more than, than any other creature in the world. We ask, Lord, that you would give wisdom to their caregivers and doctors, especially this day praying for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, and all call upon your most holy name. Give them strength in their hour of need, O Lord, for you are their Savior and their comfort. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to, uh, to, to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion for this Friday morning, the day of the Epiphany, to a close. God's peace be with you. We'll be back here tomorrow, Saturday morning, for the first Saturday after the Epiphany. Uh, and as I said, we'll be looking at the book of Ezekiel now for the next few weeks. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you tomorrow.